we are going to begin by organizing our digital resources so, so we can show evidence that we are linking to prior knowledge and prerequisite skills. So that whole organization of resources is going to start with the basics. And then as we go through our progression of videos, you will continue to build on these foundational skills as we go ahead and move to different resources. We're not going to get stuck in there. This is an example of a wiki. This is my wiki. And um, don't worry about a wiki as that comes later in our sessions. But resources, organizing them. There's lots of ways we can do this. We can bookmark, we can favorite, we can do all that stuff. But as we look at this specific goal that we're working on, planning and preparation, we want to demonstrate that yes, you have looked at all different things and you have kind of a record of um, your knowledge of how you're organizing things. And my guess is right now, some of you might have bookmarks here and piles of paper here. We want to look at an organization system. That's what we're doing today. So I'm using my wiki to show you bad organization. Well, it's not all bad, but some of it, I wish I had thought through the systems before I went ahead and collected the resources. So let's use my example so yours will look so much better. So here's one I recently did on the Common Core State Standards for Math and Technology. These are a few resources that I have pulled together for a presentation, and I've put them in here. So let's kind of look at the structure of how I organize this. The first one's kind of the opening email address, so on and so forth. But look at that. My email address, that's the heading, but you can't see what that is without clicking on the link. Is that okay? I don't know, you gotta kind of think through how you wanna go ahead and organize that. Would you in your organization system rather see the heading in the link out there and the address? So just be thinking about that. So let's skip to the second section, engaging students. The second one is Poll Everywhere website, awesome website. And it, right there it goes ahead and links out, but it doesn't give an instruction of what is Poll Everywhere. So maybe I should have gone given more detail at that point. So think about your system. So study my bad system and create your own system. Now this is another page that I did it kind of in a combination mess. So let's skip to the first one. Oh, the first one, Web 2.0 tools. There, number one, there's a web address and then a little definition. Number two, Twitter and then twitter.com. That doesn't give me much information. If you have no clue what Twitter is, I should have said a micro blogging site. You still might not know what Twitter is, but at least it gives you more clues about what that potentially could be. Get a little better in the next one, tweet deck, organize your tweets around tweet deck, and so on and so forth. But then I get to the last one, visit historical tweets. There's no address again. So we have to think about how do we want to organize it in this kind of mixing in matching doesn't look great. So you got to really just think about your system, okay? Don't worry about the how-to. We're going to get there. I want you to be thinking about your system because your goal here is to show that you understand relationships between what you're teaching and what maybe came before it. So you might, if you teach um, geometry at the high school level, you might have different subcategories. They did this last year. Okay, now I'm building on that. So your organization system is not going to be my organization system. And as you can see, it's lacking a little bit here. All right, this is awesome. I do connected these um, resources, BYOT, so you know that term, is bring your own technology. Sometimes it's called BYOD also. These are great resources if your district is thinking about bringing your own technology to school. But again, I don't describe like the article, BYOT article. Okay, from, I could have cited the magazine or whatever. It, think through your system. Do you want a mess like this? Hmm. This looks nice and clean, but maybe not enough information. I'd end up linking to everything to, before I could find anything. All right, so let's get into the how-to. So first of all, before we go, the plan is, as we go through these videos, is start and stop anywhere you are. I would stop right now and think through your organization system before you get into the how-to. And so what do you want? What are you trying to demonstrate? And think through the organization. But then we'll get into the how-to. So the how-to, how to create a hyperlink in 
whatever it is, whatever document, this doesn't matter. Um, the process we're going through works the same on almost everything. So once you have these foundational skills, whatever site you're on, you'll be like, ah, oh, I know how to do this. And so um, creating a hyperlink. A hyperlink means a link out to another resource. That's what it means. So I just Googled creating a hyperlink. The first one right there is from a great trusted site, Internet for Classrooms. Just wonderful resources for you. If you're one of those people that need step by step by step, there's your place for you. Um, so click number one. Yay. There's a lot of results, but number one's what I needed. And here it is. Love this. There's, um, they've worked so hard. There's, oh, so many pages. I won't even begin to guess. So there you are. Step by step by step. If that's what you need, look across the top. That's the address. Every single page on the internet has its own unique address. Some are huge and some are little things like twitter.com. So everyone has its own address. And that address is called a URL. Don't call it a URL. That, that's no, don't do that. Don't do that. And it can be called either, if you need to know what it stands for, Uniform or Universal Resource Locator. You don't really care what URL stands for. You care that every page has its own. So if you capture that, you can always get back to that page. That doesn't mean that page will always be there. And it's so frustrating. You, you get a, a website. You're like, yeah, high school teacher teaches um, Spanish. Perfect. Click, the link is dead, dead, dead. Usually when it's dead, you get this page that is called a 504. That means the page is moved, gone, no longer there. You can't have it. But I also did a screenshot of this because I wanted to show you that if you need a definition, you don't have to go out to like a, well, you don't have to go to a print dictionary. You can. You can if you want to, but you can always do it right in Google. And I always just put what word I am in definition. And you can see lots of results, but I get a clean box that gives me my definition. And then, of course, more results if I need more information. So this is my quick way that if I wanted to find exactly um, the definition. So back again, there's the URL. It's highlighted in blue. So if yours is not highlighted in blue, you just have to highlight it. And the next thing you're going to do is you are going to copy that link. I blew this up large so you could see this. Copy. Next to copy you can see uh, the command and the C. These are shortcuts. Anytime you see a menu like that over to the right, these are the shortcuts to that you don't have to go up to the menu with your mouse and pull it down. You can just go to on your keyboard you can press the command or the control um, command or control, it just depends if you're on a Mac or PC, command, control, and the C. It automatically copies it to the clipboard. You don't have to go up, you don't have to pick up your mouse and go do that. The couple that are just key for you to know are the first one, undo. That's the one I bet I use a hundred times a day. So command, control, Z, either command or control, just depends on how your computer is set up. Z, undo. And I put something in the wrong place, up. Oh, Command Z, Command Z. And so learning those on the right will save you so much time. And so in the end, the great part is almost all of them are universal. So if you're on a PC one day and you go to a Mac another day, uh, Command C is still the same thing. A few of them are different, but my basics are right here. And so um, I just wanted to stop and point that out to you. So learn those. Save time. I am all about saving time. Okay, so now you're getting ready to make your page. You had stopped, you made your organization system, and now you're ready to create a hyperlink. I hope you err on the side of writing, like maybe, see what I did is creating a hyperlink to a resource. Boom, that's the part I'm going to create the hyperlink on. This is a website I can access to learn more about, hyper that's the definition of the page. I just think when you look at this three months from now, it's going to make so much more sense if you take the minute to type that sentence about what this resource is. That's my opinion. You're making your own resources. So highlight what you want to hyperlink. Remember, hyperlink out to the URL. And so you highlight that, and then you right-click. Now, you right-click on your mouse, that right click always gives you a menu. Instead of again, you could go up to the menu bar, but that right click is again designed to save you time so you don't have to go look around for things. Right click. If you're working on a Mac, it depends how the Mac is set up, but um, a lot of times it's exactly the same as the PC, that the trackpad is set up on the laptop 
to um, right click. It depends. On mine, I press the control key and click, and that is my right click. So once you find your right click, make it your best friend because it will save you so much time. All right, so go down into hyperlink, and the next thing you're going to do is the top you can see, link to. Insert your hyperlink. All right, you're done. And there you can go ahead and see the display name is right below that. That's what you had highlighted. If you wanted to change that at this point, you absolutely could do that. Say OK. Yay! You have a hyperlink. All right, got a lot more to go, but this is your first one. And so create your hyperlink. It is, it is blue. You know it's a hyperlink. And so that means it links out to some type of resource. If you click on that, it automatically turns purple. So you know, hey, you've already been there. Nice visual visual clue for you. Some people it drives them nuts because then they're they're some are blue and some are purple. I'm not that much of a control freak about color. And if you just want to see where what the link it links out to, you can just hold your mouse over that and you say, oh yep, that's that great site that I have the tutorials on. So depending on how you want to organize, now you know that I've I've showed you my models. I've tried different ways and I however you want to go ahead and do this you make your decision, but kind of stick with the same plan. Don't be like me. Some days I put definitions, some days I don't. So have a system is the key to this one. Now, I have all these resources. I have um, all different pages, and you can see my Common Core for Math, and then I do co-teaching strategies. What I ended up having to do is make a table of contents, and that's what this is. And that's what I showed you earlier on my wiki. Don't get worried about what a wiki is. But this, then I ended up, because I ended up with hundreds of pages on my wiki, then I had to go back and make a table of contents. So you could do that. You could have, for all your units, you could have a page for each of your units and then make a table of contents. That would work. And it, it, you do it the same way. You hyperlink to a document instead of a website. So, for example, you'd make one master copy of all your topics. And then what you would do is you would then highlight the, the word, and then create, right click, create hyperlink, and then instead of picking a web page, you go out and find the document you want to hyperlink to. The only thing with this is different is that all those documents might be on your computer. If you tend to move to a website down the line after you watch a few more videos, those links might not be connected. So you really have to kind of Think about this. For today, just make hyperlinks to websites. Let's let's start there, and then we'll go um, a different place another time. So the key is organize these digital resources. You probably have stuff all over the place. So let's go ahead. Remember, back to our goal, planning, preparation. And we want to demonstrate that you have knowledge of your content. Well, you've got to have it synthesized in some way. And that's what the hyperlinking will, will help you do is kind of pull all your pieces together. So then you can demonstrate that you have a good grasp of what came before, what you're teaching, and possibly what's coming after um, the, what, the lessons that you'll be doing. So get organized and you'll be so much better at planning preparation. Thanks!